good morning children today we are going to learn a small poem the name of the poem is chivi it is part of your fourth lesson ashes that makes the tree blue so what this poem talks us about is the grown up people always keep instructing the small kids what they should do and what they should not they always keep telling the desired instructions that these little kids to follow how to sit how to talk and how to say thanks and all those things they are always giving to these small kids and towards the end of the poem we see some irony there the last couplet that says this elderly people expects something different from the small kids that they should make their own decisions till then they talk about they should follow them strictly and obediently but at the end of the poem they come to expect a make up of mind from the small kids now let us move on to the poem look at the poem chivi chivi ask yourself as well as your partner do you like to be always told what to do or not to do do grown ups do this in your experience when michael was 5 years old his mother took him to a nearby school for admission the teacher asked what does your mother call you at home child michael don't came the confident reply so this don't is a instruction his mother used to tell him michael don't do that michael don't do it michael don't go there michael don't take it so naturally the child thought his name is michael don't so the elders always trying to keep their instructions with us not to chivi is to nag to continuously urge someone to do something often in an annoying way a continuous nagging presence of something or pressure of doing something is known as chivi now let us read the poem grown up say things like pick up don't talk with your mouth full don't stare don't point don't pick your nose sit up say please less noise shut the door behind you don't drag your feet haven't you got a hanky take your hands out of your pocket pull your socks up stand up straight say thank you don't interrupt no one thinks you are funny take your elbows off the table can't you make your own mind up about anything this poem is written by michael rosen now let us understand this poem grown up say things like speak up which means speak a little more louder speak up what do you have to say tell 
and don't talk with your mouth full this is at another instruction from the elderly people don't talk with your mouth full don't talk with food in your mouth that is the meaning of this sentence don't talk with the food in your mouth when you fill your mouth with food don't try to talk the danger behind it they are trying to convey to you don't stare sometimes the elderly give you the instruction don't stare look at the staring face here if you look at like this your elders will say don't stare at me and next instruction is don't point don't point when you point your parents or your elders they would definitely tell you don't point at me don't pick your nose at another instruction at another lesson they want to teach us is don't pick your nose look at this child he is picking his nose so if you put your fingers inside your inside your nose your parents will definitely tell you don't pick your nose other instructions are sit up sit please less noise oh children make less noise you sit straight say please if you want something from somebody you ask using the word please or make less, less noise shut the door behind you at another instruction they want to teach the small kids shut the door behind you shut the door behind you means please close door when leaving when you go out please close the door that means shut the door behind you this is another instruction this elderly people wanted to give to these small kids don't drag your feet if you do some pranks with your feet the elders would definitely tell you don't drag your feet look at the picture here he is dragging his feet on the ground so they say don't drag your feet how do you got a hanky this is at another situation in which the elders ask the small kids don't you have a kerchief in your hand to wipe it out look at a hanky here a kerchief is called a hanky don't you have a hanky take your hands out of your pocket this is at another instruction from another group of elders take your hands out of your pockets look at the small child here he is keeping his hands in his pocket some elders don't like it they will say don't keep your hands in your pocket pull your socks up this is when they say that there's some mismatch between the two socks in their legs in their feet they would definitely tell them pull up the socks stand up straight if you do some pranks and don't listen to them they would definitely tell the small kids like stand up straight stand up straight then say thank you in which situation they wanted to tell these children to say thank you especially when they receive something from somebody or they want some help from somebody else from their elders or from their siblings they should be instructed to say thank you for receiving the help or thank you for receiving the uh, thing then don't interrupt if you are doing something very busily and a little kid came and disturbed you you should definitely tell 
him or her don't interrupt then no one thinks you are funny this is another occasion no one thinks you are funny the elder said this instruction to a small kid when they are showing some shyness to express their feelings for example if you ask them to sing a song and in the presence of others they don't feel comfort then you will definitely say that no one thinks you are funny you can definitely you can courageously present your song in front of us so that is the occasion no one thinks you are funny take your elbow off the table take your elbow off the table if you sit with your elbows on the table they will say take your elbows from the table come to the last couple can't you make your own mind up about anything can't you make your own mind up about anything this couplet at the end of the poem is an example of irony what the poet demands till now is contrasted with the last two lines and can't you make your own mind up about anything which means can you take a decision of your own till now the speaker wants to follow him blindly by the small kid but now he asking the same small kid don't you have a mind to make up your own decisions why don't you take your own decisions make your own mind up let us check that idiom make up one's mind it's an idiom definition of make up one's mind is to make a decision about something to decide this is the meaning to decide take examples i can't make up my mind where to take my vacation so difficulty to take a decision i can't make up my mind where to take my vacation where to go my vacation look at the second example he is thinking about going but he still hasn't made up his mind yes he is thinking about going but he still hasn't made up his mind made up his mind about going that is make up one's mind another example i can't decide for you you will have to make up your own mind why i have to take a decision for you i can't decide for you you will have to make your own mind you will have to make you will have to make up your own mind which means you will have to take your own decisions don't compel me to take a decision for you now let us check this poem is written by michael rosen working with the poem discuss these questions in small groups before you answer them when is grown up likely to say this don't talk with your mouth full while the kids taking food the elders instructed them don't talk while you filled your mouth with food third question when are you likely to be told this say thank you when you receive some help or when you demand from something from somebody when you receive it you have to say thank you then question number 3 when do you think an adult would say this no one thinks you are funny the adults used to tell this to small kids when they are asked to sing a song or asked to tell a story in front of an audience and they feel shy of it and then they will tell this kind of instruction no one think you are funny you can confidently present your item 
look at the second question the last two lines of the poem are not prohibitions or instructions what is the adult now asking the child to do do you think the poet is suggesting that this is unreasonable why yes actually this is unreasonable in sense somehow because till now the poet wants the child to follow him strictly and blindly all his instruction should be followed without any fail and at the end of the poem the poet asks why don't you make up your own mind why don't you keep your own decisions that is a contrasting idea there and why it is so because as humans we have to cultivate the habit of making our own minds or taking our own decisions as we grow up look at the third question why do you think the grown ups say the kind of things mentioned in the poem is it important that they teach children good manners and how to behave in public yes it is essential to teach the children good manners and how to behave in public otherwise they don't properly behave in front of others and the elders so it is essential thing to instruct the small kids what they should do and what they should not come to the last question if you had to make some rules for grown ups to follow what would you say make at least five such rules arrange them arrange the lines as in a poem so you can also give such instructions for your elders that they don't want to follow in their life you can say that cut short their screen time don't switch on the televisions during the study time for children like that you can also give some instructions to the elders that you want to share with your elders children this is a small but interesting poem you have to read the text several times and then make a note of all these questions and answers and word meanings thank you